Nick Solomon with jazzgraphs.com. I'm with Frank Trigg. Possibly turn to professional wrestling? No, possibly. I, yeah, I'm in training. I'm a professional wrestler in training. Scott D. Moore has been nice enough to volunteer some time. So uh, every TNA show, I spend three hours in the morning having him just, just beat the living crap out of me. And then have my, my pre tapes, my post tapes, and then got to do my, my you know, rush ins and all that other stuff. And then come back and do it again the next day. And we have three days in a row of it, uh, twice a month. So six days in my intense pro wrestling training. Uh, it's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. A lot harder. I thought it was, oh, come on. Come on, I get punched in the face to it. It should be simple. Man, it's really tough. It's really tough. You're actually doing a really good job. Frank is actually making it really exciting in, in the area of TNA. Not just that, but uh, it also seems to be that the world of professional wrestling seems to be mimicking a little bit more of the mixed martial arts fight. We see a lot more ground, double leg takedowns, turning the ground, pound action on the ground. What do you think about that? It makes sense because that's what's popular on TV right now. You know, the, the whole storylines of, of pro wrestling are all about what's happening in popular culture. And right now, MMA is popular culture. So as a result, you're going to see it's going to change how things went. For a long time, it was all about the boxing, but you can't really, you know, you can't really mimic how a boxer is without being a boxer. But in MMA, you kind of really see the stuff that you're doing. It's almost like a Japanese strong style of, of pro wrestling. And it's, it makes sense for what's happening right now, especially with, you know, with, with Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe over in TNA and AJ Styles. They all have great wrestling backgrounds. Backgrounds and great submission backgrounds. Throw me in the mix, all of a sudden, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a little bit different of a ball game. Not much different. There's still a lot of stuff that you have to stick with the elements of, of traditional pro wrestling. But yeah, it's, it's great to see it kind of expand a little bit. Definitely. Now, obviously, it's mutually beneficial for yourself and for TNA. Any idea for when we can see you in the ring? Actually, wrestling the first match? You know what? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hoping and praying it's going to be at a pay per view here in the next couple of months, but uh, I have a fight at the end of August, so things are going to get held off at least until September or October before anything like that can happen because I have to get to this fight first. And then, um, you know, knowing it just kind of depends on how Dixie Carter and Jeff Jerry want to use me. It could be it could be the beginning of next year. It could be the end of this year. I, I don't know, but I'd like to see something here next, next three months. Hey, Randy, I got your Do you see it as maybe like this is the beginning? We'll see where it goes, or is it something like maybe I got some long term aspirations to continue doing wrestling for a while? I, it's, it's both. I have long term aspirations to see how I can do in this and see where it goes, but I might not be any good at it, so it might be a short term thing. But the question is, am I any good at this? Thing? That's, what, that's what I'm trying to find out. That's the reality of it. I'm not. I'm not a great worker. I can talk and get from the mic crowd up and do all that. But to be able to actually do a match is a tough thing. If I'm any good at it is the question. If I if I am good at it, then I have longevity. If I'm not any good at it, now I'm gonna be fucking short. <laughs> <laughs> well Frank, could you briefly tell our viewers about uh, your next your upcoming fight? Uh, we're fighting at the World Victory Road Suzuki uh, August 24th in Saitama Super Arena in Tokyo, Japan. I'm fighting uh, Takimoto, who is a judo Olympian, won the gold medal I think in 2000. Uh, right now he's five and four um, uh, in the in the uh, uh, in his professional record. His first match I think was against. I don't know. He's, he's won, he beat some guys he shouldn't have beat. He, he, uh, he beat Bustamani, but he lost to Cyborg. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, he's kind of an anomaly. It's kind of strange in how this guy fights, but what, what basically is happening and building up is I'm a soccer team talking a lot of shit overseas about how I, when I beat him here at Pride 32, he's very upset at how I beat him. He didn't feel right. He thought that, that I, I didn't get the best him, so he didn't want to fight me, do a rematch for years. Now we're both in the same organization. We have a shot of doing that, but my, this contract is not exclusive. It's exclusive only to Japan. And uh, Korea, I can fight anywhere else in the organization as long as that like, the top of the fighting dates don't conflict. So hopefully you'll see me fight for you know on a CBS card or you know or, or an NBC card here before too long. An interesting point you brought up, Mizaki, um, because prior to your fight with him, going into that, we actually predicted on our website that you would win that fight. Well, that's because you guys are smart as well as good looking. This is how it works. God damn, Frank <laughs> Drake. <laughs>